I have flaws. What are they? Oh, I don't know. I sing in the shower. Sometimes I spend too much time volunteering. Occasionally I'll hit somebody with my car. So sue me. Got it. There he is. It's the Hello. Lesser, it's the lesser spotted Tom Morrison. Lesser spotted? Yeah. In your natural habitat on my computer screen. Ah, yes. I am. <laughs> How's it going? Not too bad. How are you? Yeah, good. You well? Excited. Yeah, excited to get stuck in. Had breakfast. Ready to go. No, no breakfast. Just coffee. Oh, love it. Love it. So if you're currently watching this, you're not currently watching this because we're not we're not live live, but if you're currently watching this and you don't know who Tom Morrison is, you don't know who Jenny Sanders is, they are your mobility gurus, basically. Um, they, they're they my go-to resource whenever I don't know something about um, mobility, about hips, about backs, about knees and things like that. And I've been following Tom for, it must be four years, kind of since I started, which was 2017. I kind of stumbled upon, upon your stuff. Probably to do with like Facebook algorithms, all that, and they presented me with you. And uh, I guess I've learned an awful lot over the last few years following your stuff. And it's great to be able to sit down and chat with you. So you have a Facebook group called the Simplistic Mobility Method, which I'm part of. And there's over 9,000 people in it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing just seeing every day there's people from all over the world talking about how much this method is helping them get out of the pain cave, live pain-free lives um, without surgery, without doing anything crazy. And it's just, I, I've, I've been a part of it actually since before I bought the Simplistic Mobility Method. Um, and it was great to see that. And I think that's a really good tactic in your part by letting people in the kind of behind the curtain to see what what progress people are actually making. Well, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Like I, I can I can stand and shout until I'm blue in the face, but it, it's quite hard, I find, now where I'm at because I am pain free and I'm you know I've, I've been pain free for so long and you know I move quite well now it's great for the other members of the group if someone comes in and they say look I've got this problem I'm this age I've this background they're gonna find one of the other members having the exact same experience that they're going through now and they're just a tiny bit ahead of them so it's it's more relatable that way rather than me trying to say oh yeah yeah you can definitely be fixed you can definitely be fixed it's just it's so much better coming from someone that you feel like you're closer to. So oh. that's where the group's really great. Really, like it's so supportive in the group. Yeah, and there's there's so many people in it now that it kind of runs itself, doesn't it? I mean, people are kind of they're starting conversations and they're they're getting interactions, and you don't really have to do too much. I mean, you, you can chip in whenever they ask you to, but it's kind of kind of runs in itself. Absolutely, own. yeah. And there, and there's people that have been there like yourself for so many years that they're they're answering with our youtube videos they're saying this is what tom would say in this situation like it's yeah. so cool to see you know and, and i go on and i just i'm just like thumbs up yeah that's that's exactly what i would give the person as well so yeah um it's so cool to see you know the the message that you're spreading and it's you know it is rubbing off on people and you know people are being encouraging and stuff because so so many people get so disheartened about things and and then if they're around other people that are just for giving up anyway themselves you, that's you just start to believe it yourself and you're like nah i can't be bothered then you know if 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 they can't do it, I can't do it. Why would anyone be able to do it? You know, so the group's just full of people that that have they have fixed themselves and they've made themselves feel better with the exact same program, the exact same movements. So yeah. um, there there is method in the madness. It's not just a couple of nice stretches that I like. Yeah. It is um extremely well thought out. It's just it's called the simplistic mobility method because I've taken out all the jargon and anything that's not necessary at all. It's just the stuff that you need that's in order. Totally. Which leads me on to kind of a first question is, what is mobility? Because a lot of people have it in their mind, that, and I used to think this, that it's just flexibility. Be able to touch your toes, that might be the limit of what somebody thinks um, mobility is. How would you sum up the differences between flexibility, mobility, stability? Uh, mobility our mission is to separate out what people believe mobility is and that it's just something that you do as part of your gym work. Mobility should be a non-negotiable thing that everyone should do regardless of how they feel. If they enjoy exercise or not, I don't care. You should be looking after your joints. You should be looking after your hips and your shoulders so that you don't have neck pain all the time or chronic back pain all the time or 
um, you know, everyone just sort of chalks it off at a certain point to age. And like I meet people every week in their 30s that say that they're getting on a bit. And it's just down to bad habits and it's through not focusing on mobility. So it needs to be separated out. It's like that you do it at home. You do five minutes a day and you work on those main important things, which is essentially what SMM is. And it just makes sure that you have a foundation to be able to push yourself if you want to or just to be able to cope with daily life so that if you decide to go with the family for a walk up a mountain, you're not getting crippled for five days afterwards, you know, so that you have the ability, your joints are strong enough to cope with life, essentially. So that's what mobility needs to become. It's not just, you know, oh, make sure you stretch after your workouts. That's, you know, that's, that's stretching after your workouts. That's not mobility. Mobility is actually looking after yourself and keeping things in check because so many injuries start happening weeks before they actually happen. Yeah. So if you're always looking after your mobility, like that's the best prehab you can ever do. It's like, oh, here, my neck's starting to feel a bit stiff, you know, and if you catch that three weeks before you then haven't been moving your neck properly for three weeks, you know, and then you tweak something, you're like, oh, I'm so unlucky. And it's like, no, yeah. the signs were there. Yeah. They always were. Yeah, totally. Um, you, you hear people saying a lot of the time is, you know, the deadlift hurt my back. And Maybe maybe it did. Maybe there was you know bad technique or whatever, or not knowing how to brace or you know too too heavy. Somebody going for too heavy a load, but quite often as you said, there's a huge build up to it. There's a there's something wasn't right to begin with, um, mm. and it just took one rep and the the, the yeah. cap came crashing down. Yeah. And that's the thing, your your deadlift form could be absolutely perfect, but because you weren't moving your hips through all of the ranges of motion that they can move in it just got overloaded over time. You were just loading one pattern too much. So as long as you're doing just enough to keep your hips happy, then the deadlift is a fantastic exercise. Like everyone should be doing deadlifts of some, you know, you don't have to deadlift heavy, but you should know how to do it. You should know how to activate your hamstrings and you should know how to brace. So if your hips are moving really well and you're doing that often enough, then you'll be able to deadlift your face off and you'll be fine. It will be a beneficial exercise. But if you're never sitting down in a deep squat, you're never working on your balance, you're never working on your foot strength, for example, as well, then you know, you're know you just leaving yourself open to these big compound strength movements that everyone says is a functional movement, which yes, it is, but it's a part of a bigger functional system that of other things that need looked after as well. So um, there's so many people that just don't rotate their hips. You know, I kind of forget sometimes, even now that you know the 90-90 position, which is one of the most popular ones for mobility work, that so many people in the world still aren't doing that. They're just cracking away. They're just doing lunges. They're just doing squats and they're just doing deadlifts and they're missing out on that rotational element of the hips, which they need so much. Totally. Um, the 1991, I, I took a few days break there over last weekend as well in Port Stewart. And you know, when you're on holidays, you're, you're sitting about more, you're going from one cafe to the next restaurant, blah, blah, blah. I find that 1990 stretch was so good just to keep everything in order because hips just tightened up so much. And just yeah. spending time in that position is is phenomenal. It's so simple in so many ways, but it does wonders. And I've used it with clients. I use it quite regularly with clients who I know maybe have tight hips or maybe the, the back has given them issues in the, in the past. And they think it's, it's an incredible one as well. But it's not just about individual ex exercises. You're more about principles, aren't you? Trying to, um, <laughs> pardon me, but try, trying to uh, emphasize principles and learning for yourself what, what how things work and then trying to apply that to your own body rather than just taking what somebody says on the internet do this one that fixes back pain figuring out what what's going on in your own body and then trying to to use the the, the tools that you have that you and jenny have developed for us exactly um, and that, that was what i started to oh what's going on there <laughs> Um, that's what I started to notice was that things need to be done in a certain order. So there was people that was coming to me and they were doing good exercises. They were doing exercises that they should be doing for their hips, for example, but it was the order that they were doing them in that was making the problem or problems even worse. So, um, you'll start to come across like unilateral training. So starting to do single leg exercises to correct imbalances, but, um, bringing it right back to 9090 again, if your 9090 is really different on one side compared to the other side, and there's there's a difference with how your hips are moving. So this is essentially what led to me at injuring my back was that my right hip was so bad compared to my left hip. So I was doing lunges, I was doing everything, but every lunge I was doing, I may as well have been doing sideways squats because the hips weren't moving properly. So I was compensating every time I was using my right leg, regardless of what I was doing the unilateral exercises. So it was so important to address your hips first through stretches, actually open things up, improve your extension, improve your flexion, improve your rotation first, 
then you do the unilateral stuff. That's when that stuff starts to come in so that you're not compensating when you're doing that exercise. And then that's where you're actually going to get the benefits from it. Same thing when it comes to the shoulders, the amount of people that are doing corrective exercises for their shoulders without opening their upper back up first is just insane. You know, I meet people so often they've had bits shaved off their shoulders to try and create space in their shoulders because they're getting impingement sensations. And it's like, have you ever done an upper back stretch? And they're like, why? It's my shoulder that's sore. And it's like, because you're not able to move your ribs or your shoulder blades properly. That's why you're getting an impingement. That's the problem. And just through a couple of good breaths and a couple of good stretches, they're then able to do the shoulder exercises better and they feel totally fine doing them. There's so many people that I've met, like I'm talking within 20 minutes, like even I feel like I'm exaggerating, but 20 minutes, a couple of stretches, they've had shoulder pain for years and it's sorted within a couple of minutes just yeah. through working on the upper back because the shoulders can then move freely. So then you're not, your brain's not going danger and starting to give you all the weird sensations that it can start to give you. So sometimes it's just complete positioning with people. So that's why it's so important with SMM that it is literally do it in this order. Don't skip any exercise. They all build on each other. Yeah. So especially if you want to improve how your glutes work, it's really important to open up the front of your hips first. So actually open up so you can extend your hips better. So then you can actually use your glutes to their maximal. And then it'll stop your hip flexors from tightening up all the time. So that's the sort of ideas that SMM's built on. It's like, if I could go back in time and just hand myself this thing and say, do this, be consistent with it. Don't slack off. Just do it in this order. Don't try and get fancy. You'll be fine. And that's what SMM is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Um, I love yeah the 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 hip hip flexor one as well couch stretch things like that are really really good I find those really beneficial mm -hmm. um and again it's trying to identify and this was really good about your YouTube channel uh, I was going to talk about this later on but your YouTube channel is so good because say someone say someone puts in lower back pain on one side in the in the YouTube mm -hmm. there all sorts of things come up and there'll be there'll be a lot of nonsense there'll be people they'll be talking about back stretches and this and that but they'll not actually identify or help someone identify is this relevant to them. Whereas if I put in Tom Morrison, lower back, tight one side, I would see all of your kind of lower back videos. But then your videos would take me through in a pretty clever way that would show me, um, is this relevant to me? No, not that one, this one. And it would help me actually self-identify and go, right, I'm going to try this stretch. And a lot, a lot of times it's nothing to do with the lower back. It's the hips, isn't it? Um, and it's trying, trying to work on the hips. Why do you think so many people miss, like, for years, I've, I came across videos on YouTube, people just do this stretch, you know, rotate, land your back, rotate your legs, clack, crack, pop, all that. Why do you think so, there's so many videos out there? Is it just to get hits? But there's so many, excuse me, so many videos on YouTube are designed just lower back stretches. And for 90% for of people, I would imagine, I'm guessing, but 90% of people, it's nothing to do with their lower back. Their back just, just works flaring up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's something that because of temporary relief, if something feels good almost initially, yeah. then, you know, we're led to believe that it works and that's, you know, oh, I need, oh, okay. I need to do this more often then. Um, but if you say you have instability with your lower back, like your lower back screaming out for stability. So if you can't hold a proper side plank, if you can't balance on one leg, for example, so you're literally telling me you can't hold yourself up and you're basically falling over all the time. That's why your lower back's hurting because it's just going, you are not, you're not able to cope with life. You're just, you're falling all over the show. And um, so a lower back stretch there can actually make your problems worse because your, your lower back's almost trying to stay tight to protect you, to slow you down to stop you from doing anything silly. So you don't get hurt more. So by constantly stretching it, it's not going to help. It's going to make the problem worse. So um, that's what we've kind of tried to do with our content is give people a bit of what they think that they want and then also throw in the sideways sort of like but you know what actually could be the problem check this as well and more often than not what i started to notice with people even people that were incredibly fit so i work a lot with them like cyclists and you know aerobically they're insanely fit you know their legs are crazy strong but anytime i test them in the smm movements they couldn't hold a side plank to save their life and their upper back mobility was terrible so that's why they always had such bad back pain and their hips always felt so bad because the likes of walking, swimming, cycling, there's not that much joint movement in them. So you can get crazy, crazy good at them, but they're not going to make any difference for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. What about, so the Simplistic Mobility Method, great program. I have it right here, actually. Just showing off now. <laughs> but um, 
it's um so good. But, but do you ever get do you ever get people asking you why what's the difference between doing doing that and doing yoga or doing Pilates? Um, do do people ever ever think of that or? Uh, yeah yeah all the time um and that's essentially what i've done so there's only so much good stuff to go around every everything's already invented it was all being done by a monk a million years ago in a temple somewhere you know it's already been done so i've taken a lot of stuff from martial arts from pilates from yoga hang on <clears throat> and uh yeah it, it was the order that makes the difference it's the order you do things in you need to have a combination of both stretching and stability exercises to actually make any difference to how your body feels so you actually need a lot less than you think you do now by all means if you enjoy yoga you enjoy pilates do them do them anyway you know it's still a great thing to do they are fantastic systems to do but what i always wanted was the for the person to say look shut up you need this this is non-negotiable has to be done that's what smm essentially is so yoga and pilates they are great martial arts are great do them all but you need to focus on the most important things yeah yeah no it's it's um it's it's something that i i, I guess i get never recommend like yourself your videos your products to the, the people it's something I'm like, well i do pilates or i do yoga but as you say it's the it's the order in which they're done and trying to cut out a lot of the non-essential ones and again that's that's the problem isn't it with the internet um you get you get a million stretches thrown at you or a million move, moves to do or a million different variations and I was trying to figure out which ones are really essential for optimal hip mobility, ankle mobility, shoulder mobility, and doing them in the right order then. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what the simplistic mobility method is really good at doing. It just cuts away it all away. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what, what I notice with a lot of like mobility programs, like if someone shows me what they've been given as a part of mobility plan, is that it misses out the certain range of the hips so you have for your hips you've got flexion extension internal rotation external rotation and you also have how they can move up and down vertically so hiking at the sides with the hips too and you also have then abductor strength and adductor strength for any coach that's listening to this always check your clients adductor strength because nine times out of ten you'll get lucky and that's going to be the thing they suck at most so that's where you can fix things what you'll see with most people is that their abductor strength is totally fine. And that's why clamshells is one of the most commonly recommended um, exercises to help fix hip pain. But have you ever met someone that struggled to do clamshells? It's like, okay, put a band around your knees and just open your legs and close them, open your legs and close them. They'll maybe, you know, feel a bit of a burn after a few reps, but they can do them straight away. The amount of people that I've met in my life that cannot hold a Copenhagen plank to save their life which is whenever you're holding up yourself with your adductor muscle rather than the abductors um, is absolutely insane. And that leads to back pain. That leads to knee pain. So if your hips aren't complete, so if you haven't addressed all them things well, that's where your lower back and your knees are going to start to absolutely hate you because you have an incomplete hip. You're just walking around. You're basically shuffling from side to side because everything isn't supported from all sides. So it's so important to keep that in mind. And there's so many extra, there's thousands of extra, millions of exercises out there probably, but, like I said, or like you said earlier on, it's all, SMM is all based on principles. It's like if I select the best exercises that cover all the principles of how the body works, that's what SMM is. So it's not a few exercises that are nice to put together. It's yeah. the best ones for each principle. And that's what it is. And that's why it works so well. Yeah. <clears throat> the other thing I think it's important to point out is you, you deal with movements and collections of muscle and how the body all fits together. Whereas there's a lot of... Um, self-diagnosis videos out there that will be targeting this specific obscure muscle. It's your psoas. It's, de it's, it's definitely your psoas. Everything's your psoas. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do this one and this will, this will target it. Nothing else. It'll just get that, that little yeah. muscle. You know. and so I think it's really good. Even something like the side plank march, which just yeah. it really highlights our weaknesses, doesn't it? Just getting on the side mm -hmm. plank and trying to lift your, your knees up um, while staying in a stable position. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, mad, it's mad how much that exposes us. Mm -hmm. we're not used to it yeah and that's um it's good what what the side plank march works there is it works on your adductor strength your abductor strength it fires your obliques it makes you work your hip flexors it makes you understand bracing while moving from the hip as well and it also fires up your lats and it will improve your posture also as long as you set up in it right so if you're in a good straight position you're going to be working 
where it, why it's in program where it is is because you've already addressed your sides you've stretched out your sides your hips are all stretched out everything should be sitting aligned because if you're someone that's walking around with a hiked up hip for example and you start doing core exercises all you're doing is strengthening your hiked up hip so yeah. it's so important to do the stretches first before an exercise like that comes in yeah. and then it's a total body exercise which you can make harder again by focusing on bracing harder so next time you're doing a side plank march brace as if you were doing a max deadlift like really yeah. over brace more than you want to and yeah. you'll find it is so much harder to lift your legs up you'll really yeah. really find a big difference there and then you can work on controlling your breathing as well so in that one exercise alone it hits so much stuff um, and it's the one that most people will struggle with, especially someone that would be hypermobile. So someone that appears to move perfectly, they have the best flexibility ever, but they're still in just as much pain as someone who's incredibly inflexible. And it's like, what's wrong? You, you seem to be moving perfectly. And you start testing things like that yeah. and they will just find it so, so hard. So that's where you can focus more on, with them. Yeah. And um, working on those things. Which is, is probably um, a good point um, to bring in your, your partner in crime, Jenny. Is that yeah. that's something that she would would be prone to? Is that right? I was yeah, just... she is fully hypermobile. Jenny is, and yeah. um, like she struggled to walk at one point. Her shins would just start to crazy hurt. Her ankles would crazy hurt, um, just because of pure lack of stability. She's totally flat feet, um, and yeah, she could I, like whenever she first, whenever I first met her in the gym, it was like she appeared to have the picture perfect squat. She could do the splits. She could achieve anything, but as soon as she started trying to lift weights, she just kept hurting things. Just kept getting injured. And it was like, right, what are we going to do here? We're going to break everything down here. So basically me and Jenny both started to really figure out what works best for hypermobile stuff and um, how do you address it in that way um, so that, you know, you're not just trying to push through and then rest when you get hurt. It's like, no, if we strip things back so far that it's almost too easy for you and then rep it out like slowly slowly move work on balance and just do really really relaxed joint movement but for high high reps and start to build that up now she's doing backflips you know what i mean that's you know from not being able to walk around town for an hour because it would hurt her ankles too much now she's doing backflips so yeah. she still has issues now like don't get me wrong hypermobility um if you've real proper hypermobility it's an absolute nightmare um and you will just hurt things but She's able to deal with it. And now whenever she hurts her shoulder or whatever, she's able to jump right into um, the exercises that are actually in her second program, Stability Builder, and start to work on building it up again. So she knows exactly when her shoulder would like sublux, so it like partially dislocates and goes back in. Um, she knows exactly, she's able to start exercising straight away on it really. And she's able to get it back, you know, moving well within a couple of weeks rather than just going, oh no, I better not do use my shoulders ever again. It's the worst thing you can ever do. If you keep hurting something, you just and you stop moving it you just make things a lot worse like skip forward three years time if you haven't moved your shoulder properly for three years that's where frozen shoulders going to start kicking in you're not going to be able to move it at all then yeah yeah and hyper mobility is that something people are born with usually or is it that yeah. How, how, how's it yeah it's just genetic. Yeah. yeah there's there's if you search hyper mobility tests there's like nine tests or something and um, if you just search that into google you'll be able to see the tests and you can test yourself and if you hit all nine of the tests i'm, I'm pretty sure it's nine and um, if you're able to do all the movements and that's so it's one of them is just like being able to instantly put your hands flat on the floor with your legs completely straight with like no stretching whatsoever so it's almost like your flexibility comes from like the joints and the ligaments just being too loose rather yeah. than the muscles so much so that's why like you can see people that are crazy crazy flexible but their muscles feel so tight all the time yeah. and it's because they're able to just throw themselves into any position because their joints just go okay and they there's yeah. no there's no sort of stretch reflex going on there where the brain yeah. goes no don't do that that'll snap it's it's just not there so that's why they can really get hurt so easily yeah and, and it just takes it just takes more time to build things up than it would for someone I find just in my experience is it's easier to get someone from being inflexible to more flexible than it is to build someone up from hypermobile to being able to have a good bit more stability. It just takes that wee bit longer because you just, you have to be more careful at the start. But then, you know, once you've built that foundation, you know, Jenny's like the stuff Jenny can do now is insane. Like, she's so good at handstand. She's so good at um, weightlifting. She's so good at calisthenic stuff now. Like it's absolutely insane, you know, so it's, yeah. she's, it's been really cool to see her just develop over the years, you know? Yeah. For something like a deadlift, would that be a massive problem for someone with hypermobility? So trying to feel your hamstrings getting tight, for instance, would that exactly. be an issue? Yeah. yeah, 
yeah, yeah trying to create tension in the hamstrings and um, trying to lift the legs as well if you're doing a hanging leg lift trying to engage their core is a very hard thing it they almost find it harder to brace at the start not everybody but a lot of them do um so just feel bad i'm sort of oh them the, them the <laughs> hyper, the, those hypermobile those guys yeah, yeah those guys um but no that was just what i've noticed with working with people with um extreme flexibility for example yeah. is that like bracing creating tension is something that's much harder for them it's not that they don't understand it. It's just that it's harder for them to get their body to do it. You know, it's yeah. hard for anyone to do it, but for yeah. them, it seems to be much harder for them because you can explain it to someone that's not flexible and they'll probably, you know, be able to muscle their way through it quite quickly. But, yeah. you know, for love of trying with someone that's very, very flexible, they're like, oh, really? Yeah, I'm trying to brace here. It's just, yeah. you know, their, their joints just, they're just not used to that. So it does take a long time for them to build that up. Yeah, no, I remember at a time I was, I was coaching somebody trying to teach them the deadlift and, I was like, yeah, try and find your hamstrings, feel your hamstrings. Nope, nope, nope. Just, you know, it took, took forever before he, he kind of got where he needed to be. And mm -hmm. um, on the outside, his, his position looked fine, but he couldn't feel the thing. So it was, try, it was, it was trying to exactly. get him to, 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 yeah, to, to, uh, to get in that position, but not feeling it can be an issue then, not feeling that tension through your body before you try and lift something heavy. Yeah, because something, something can look totally right but if the muscles aren't working in the order it's supposed to be, something's going to break down. And when you start adding more weight to that, that's where the back just starts to round every time the deadlift. And like, oh, I've got stuck at this weight. And it's like, no, it, it hasn't been right ever. It's just yeah. because the weight was lighter, you were getting away with it. Yeah. Um, so then whenever you start to add that bit of intensity on, then all the problems just jump right out. Jump right, yeah, totally. I think it's, it's quite good, though, that coming from like Jenny's Jenny's perspective and then your perspective. So you you had a bad back injury. Um, how long was it? 20, well, 2014 or something, you said? Or how, how long ago was it since you had your... It's probably near seven years now ago. Yeah, yeah, probably twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So, so you and you didn't, you didn't really do much training until you were twenty four. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Why did you? Why, so, was, there, was there a reason why you didn't, didn't like exercise or didn't didn't bother with it? I was no interest in it at all. I mean, me and all my friends, we just drank and smoked. That's all we did. <laughs> um, and then I started watching UFC, and I was like. Here, I want to win the UFC. So I went and joined the martial arts gym. <laughs> um, never trained a day in my life. Like I, I went to a gym before, but like yeah. you just run around all the cable machines and do, you know, yeah. three sets of 12 of everything. So you're not in the machine too long. And um, yeah, I started doing martial arts six days a week and I loved it. And I just went overnight, stopped smoking, stopped drinking and just started training like a crazy person. And I got away with it for a good year, but then things started just being sore and hurting all the time. And I couldn't move on the ground the way the other guys could. You know, I couldn't pull a guard properly. I couldn't sit in my heels. Um, my shoulders were just awful. Couldn't throw a punch to save my life. Still can't. But um, yeah, I just all my flexibility started to hinder me all the time. Yeah. And I was like, right, I'm going to get strong because because it was being sore all the time. It was like, right, I need to take strength and conditioning more seriously. So I started training like a bodybuilder essentially, and then started lifting, you know, doing the Olympic lifts, and then eventually moved into CrossFit with no flexibility it's the worst thing in the world you can do um because the information back then wasn't the same as accessible as it is now yeah. and there was no there was no uh, amount of resources on the youtube you could kind of use in the same way you can now yeah um so i was just blindly going oh well i've heard something again i'll rest till it's better and then a couple of weeks later i'd start training again and then a couple of weeks later it would hurt again and then it would hurt myself again and so it was just it was my shoulder and my knee started first and my neck i'd always tweak my neck and then i really badly hurt my knee and I started walking with a limp all the time. So I had a bit of meniscus flying around in it. It was just constantly inflamed. So I started having this really bad limp. So that started to combine with my already bad right hip, um, which had no movement in it whatsoever. So then my back injury when I was back squatting, um, one day it was 150 kilo for three, I think. And uh, I just felt a pop, pop, pop in my lower back and thought, oh, I've tweaked my back again for freak's sake. Because I used to do it all the time, you know, tore my fascia in my back and I realigned my pelvis and did all these things. And I just, I was always having back pain. I even remember the first ever, or one of the first holidays me and my wife ever had, we went to Amsterdam and um, I was moaning about my hip being sore the entire time. Like I made the trip miserable because I was just moaning about how sore my hip was because we're having to walk up all these weird stairs all the time. Yeah. And um, so the signs were all there, like my, that my mobility was terrible and I just wasn't listening. It just wasn't important. I was just like, ha ha ha, I'm inflexible. Ha ha ha. Didn't bother me. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, because I started loving training and then it just kept getting hurt. And then when I hurt my back, that was when I really had to step back and be like, right, what's wrong with me here? Um, and then luckily over the course of a year, I was able to improve my hip flexibility and basically do all the SMM exercises. That's when I started to learn more about them and be like, 
why can't I do this at all? Why can't I do this at all on one side and I can on the other? What's going on here? And then I started, because I was already coaching at the time, I started trying these movements with the clients as well. And I was like, they weren't as bad as me, but they were having those same aches and pains I was a few years back. And I was like, yeah. can you do this? And it was like, no. And I was like, okay, there's something in this. And that's essentially how I started to develop the the exercises. And then it was a while after that. There's just like, there's multiple light bulb moments that all led to it. And then it was a while after that, it was like, I started seeing people that they were doing the SMM movements, but they were doing them in the wrong order. And then um, that's when I started to realize, oh, it's how, it's the the way that you do them. Yeah. So that's when I just, I started eventually taking away foam roll. And I was like, well, I don't need that. And I started taking away all these exercises. I'm like, well, I don't need that. That's not actually doing anything. That's not fixing anything. I can do that. So it's not the problem. I can't do this. That is the problem. Um, and then, so over the course of a year, I made myself pain-free and my lifts all went up i was i beat my snatch i beat my deadlift i beat my squat absolutely everything felt great moved better than i ever had um looked better than i ever did felt great and then i finally got my mri scan and i went and got my i was like well i've waited this long I've waited for a year to get it so i'm going to get it anyway and i went and got it and then when i got the results it showed that i had an l4 l5 um disc protrusion and an l5 s1 disc extrusion um with irritation on the nerve so i can't actually feel my left glute properly like i feel when i squeeze it but I don't feel it move. When I feel my right one, I'm like, yep, there it's going. It's going to feel totally different to my left. And my left um, glute has atrophied as well. So it's much smaller than my right glute. And that's from my back injury, essentially. But because I do everything that I do, totally pain-free, can train like anybody else um, and feel great all the time. And anytime I do feel in the slightest bit stiff, I can get rid of it easily without you know any kind of um, fancy techniques or having to rely on anyone as well. So like I paid thousands to physios and chiropractors over the years and now i don't have to go at all i know exactly how to look after myself and i think everyone should want to get to that point yeah no definitely um apart from your one it was where it was quite obvious that pop 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 you knew your back was 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 screwed basically how what how would you say that uh, we can identify the difference between an injury and pain because sometimes we you know if someone gets pain they immediately think i'm injured i'm broken it's not always the case. Sometimes it's a bit achy. And as you say, it's like a warning sign almost. But if we don't do anything with it, we can make it worse. But is, is there a time or is there anything obvious you could advise people to go to the physio or to go to the doctor or get a scan or something? Or can you, can you, um, is there, is there a kind of a red light? Yeah, it, it really <laughs> depends on someone's lifetime of training. So if you, kind of you know you've been doing it for a few years and you kind of know your body a little bit better then you'll be able to tell the difference between like a just a sort of dull ache or a sharp intense pain so if you ever get a sharp intense pain or there's a movement that immediately you're you, like it's almost like your brain screams at you when you try to do the movement then it's probably quite an acute in, acute injury so you should go and see a physio about it and get advice there um if it's something that keeps coming back so if you've had something that's happened to you three times and it gets better and then it comes back and it gets better and it comes back. You really need to look at your overall training and start to assess, you know, what am I not doing here? What have I missed? Because that's most likely what the case is, that you're not doing something in your training. It's not that there's something actually wrong with yeah. the joint. Um, and then it just really depends if there's something, an intense nerve pain, for example, like say you did have a disc injury, which many people do. And many people are completely fine, totally pain free. don't even know that they have it. But if you keep running into that issue and again, it goes away and it comes back and it goes away and comes back, then really look into your hip flexibility, really look into your hip stability. And um, if you're like, if you just keep having flare ups of something, then again, it's probably something that you're missing. And um, if it's a fresh injury, a fresh injury to your back, fresh injury to your knee or whatever, then you go to the doctor and you have to go through those channels to try and get an MRI scan. Um, but a really good sports physiotherapist that also trains themselves as well. See if it makes sure that, you know, try and find a physiotherapist. If you enjoy lifting weights and stuff and pushing yourself, find a physiotherapist that does the same stuff so that they really, really know how it feels because a physio like that knows that you're not going to take time off. You're, you're going to say, yep, 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 definitely. Yep. Yep. I'll rest for two weeks and you'll be out running the next day. You know, they know that. So they are able to advise you properly so that then if yeah. they do say, no, you need to rest, then you do yeah. need to rest, you know? Yeah. So it just, it really depends for everyone. You know, um, I was at a stage that I was doing a CrossFit competition and I did a really, really, really bad snatch, but because the the score mattered, I decided to stand up out of it anyway um, and really hurt my shoulder and couldn't lift my arm at all again. Um, and I just knew myself, it was like, no, I know I've just, I've 
made it feel weird and aggravated, but I'm going to do my stuff anyway. So I went into the gym the next day and spent about two hours just doing straight arm rotations and stuff on my shoulder. I made it feel totally fine in one day. Whenever, like, if that had happened to me a few years ago, I would have thought I've broken my shoulder. I, I need to go to hospital right now, you know? So um, I'm not saying, I'm not advising people to do that, but you can get to know your body a lot better if you work on your mobility and you know day to day how you feel. So you will change over time. If you feel stiff all the time, if you practice, moving as soon as you get up you're going to get rid of that stiffness faster and then it's going to be it's going to become a habit to not be stiff then so that's where most people are stuck they're in a habit of being stiff and feeling stiff and they're not doing anything about it and that's why it's staying that's why it's not changing you need to change how your body feels by practice yeah no i think that's great advice and i think it's important people do take responsibility for themselves um yes <laughs> i suppose sometimes i always equate it to if someone had a car I was always making a funny noise or a grinding sound or something that was vibrating, didn't feel right. You take it to the garage immediately. Kind of funny how we don't do things like the basic maintenance on ourselves. Um, yeah. Aside from taking a car to mechanic and all of that, but because that's taking yourself to the physio or the doctor or whatever, but doing the basics yourself, like just checking all the tire pump stuff, you know, or how it's got enough oil in it, you know, doing all the basics. But it's funny how we do often take better care of our cars and we take care of our own bodies and we don't pay attention to the warning signs in ourselves. Um, what about posture? So, some people think sitting is the devil. Some people think standing on a you know on a production line is 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 the worst thing for your back. Um, you're, you're trying to get out of pain. Is is there anything? Do you, do you advise one or the other, or a combination of both, or just doing the mobility exercises? Will that help things significantly? Yeah. <laughs> if you have a good, if you have a good morning habit. Um, and as soon as you get up, you do like five minutes of moving a day and you then have separate mobility sessions that you're actually really focusing on improving things, how your hips move and your balance and everything that I've mentioned before. You can offset those hours of sitting at the desk or hours of standing. Um, so if even if you have a really labor intensive job and that you have to do, you have to lift things with your background and you have to stand hunched over in weird positions or, you know, even think about a plumber, the weird positions they have to get in all day. That's all fine. As long as you're doing the flip side, do good training when you're in good alignment. Make sure you are deadlifting with a neutral spine so that you've got both sides of the coin. That's where, you know, that's how you're going to have complete training then. So you can get away with the other stuff that you want to do. So if you're not doing good training you're, and you're just expecting to get away with what your job makes you have to do, that's the problem. So it's it's adding that stuff in and it's it's making mobility that non-negotiable. That's the trick. That's the habit. That's the trick. That's the the secret sauce. It's like include mobility work and then you get away with a lot more. Yeah. And what about when it comes to older people, what is the most have you seen like people's posture like from being like kind of hyphotic and hunched over? Have you seen people like older people, I mean 70s, 80s, have you seen them restore to any great degree their their posture? Or Yes, um, we've had a, a good few people in their 70s starting SMM and um, they'll maybe not get fully like opened up again, you yeah. know, just like having a perfect kind of posture, but they'll definitely make an improvement. Yeah. And who knows, even in the next five years, maybe they will. You know, you can always teach your body to move differently and you can always teach the muscles no matter where you are, you know, starting. It's so cool that we have people like 65 plus um, and in their 70s starting SMM. Yeah. I think people are starting to realize that they are living a lot longer these days. You know, you don't just get to 50 and go right now, I just sit in my chair and knit, you know, it that's doesn't it. happen. It's like, no, you, you've got granddads out there in their nineties doing marathons, you know, that's um, the way things are going, you know, if you want them to, you know, so it's so important to think about that. It's like, if you feel old, it's like, look at your habits. Are you being old? Are you yeah. not being active? Are you not, you know, doing this stuff, you know, and it, it, that's not a take on old people. Like, I hope I get old. I'm really looking forward yeah. to hoping I can get old. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just, I am never going to lose the habits I have now. And I'm always going to keep checking up on them so that I don't end up not accidentally balancing for five years or not accidentally moving my hips properly for five years. And then, oh, I've got all these problems now. Where did they come from? And it was like the five years that you didn't do anything, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can always make a difference at any age. Always. Yeah. I think it's good advice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up soon because I don't want to keep you back and think we'll run a bit of time here. But do you have a joke you can share with us? We usually ask guests to share a bad or a good joke if you have one. Oh, it's always good to be a bad joke. Bad joke. So, where does Napoleon keep his armies? Don't know. Up his sleeves. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I would just want to give. A little people a little bit of information about you so you can follow you and jenny on facebook 
um, just type in Tom Morrison Training, isn't it? Isn't that on, on Instagram as well, Tom Morrison, Tom Morrison Training. Um, YouTube as well, just type in Tom Morrison and I'm sure you'll pop up. Yeah. So, yeah, and you've got loads of products on your on your website as well. Um, you've got the Beginner's Bundle, Ultimate Core, Simplistic Mobility Method, which we've talked a lot about, Stability Builder and Range Training. You also offer um, video coaching and uh, one-to-one coaching as well online, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so there's loads of stuff. Um, I don't recommend very many products, but I can highly recommend anything you, you kind of put out. Definitely Simplistic Mobility Method. That's the main reason I wanted to buy it because it helped me so much, even just watching your videos. So I wanted to have something. I wanted to buy it myself and be able to back it, knowing that it was good myself. So I'm happy to do that. And yeah, I don't really push products or things, but definitely want to push that. So I do share it with, with clients a lot. But thanks so much for joining me, Tom. Thank you so much for what you're doing for thousands of people around the world, helping people stay pain free. Um, yeah, keep in touch and uh, yes. have a good one. Take care. Yes, thanks so much for having me. No bar. See you later. Good talk, bye.